Well, today we have more than 600 delegates with us uh, and we're live streaming, as you've heard, the conference for the very first time. So uh, fingers crossed and hope everything goes well. Uh, we've put together what I think is an engaging and entertaining program with a diverse list of speakers that includes experts, researchers, practitioners and administrators. I'm really particularly looking forward to our opening session, the Innovation Super Morning. And this includes four highly respected presenters. CSIRO Chairman David Thode, among other things that he does, SafeWork uh, Australia Chair Diane Smith-Gander, uh, Stephen Hykovic, uh, CSIRO's Data61 Insight Team, and author and academic Tim Dunlop. They'll give their perspectives on the future of work and then join together in a panel session uh, facilitated, of course, by Virginia. Our concurrent sessions on both days will cover a broad range of issues that are important to our sector, including recovery at and return to work, the ageing workforce, claims management, work health and safety challenges, and mental health. As you heard Virginia say, at our last conference, mental health was a, a really big focus and it continues to be so for us. I'm also looking forward to the Work Health and Safety Awards tonight. It's really important that we celebrate the achievements across our jurisdiction in making workplaces safe and healthier. The way we work continues to change at an ever increasing pace. So the theme for this year's conference is both important and timely fit for the future, collaborate, innovate, achieve. CSIRO's Data61 project, and you'll hear more about that from Stefan later, uh, identifies mega trends that are likely to have a significant impact on work health and safety and workers' compensation right across every jurisdiction. Among them are the ageing workforce, chronic illness, workplace stress and mental health issues, and blurring the boundaries between work and home life. Other trends like the automation, the rise of the gig economy may seem more obscure, but they really are creating new challenges for us all. The conference theme also reflects Comcare's business priorities. We're adapting to and growing from challenges within our own scheme, while focusing on national issues that are challenging right around the country. Collaboration and innovation are integral to tackling those challenges effectively. Despite the differences across the various work health and safety and workers' compensation jurisdictions, there's great opportunity for a united approach to many of these issues. And that's why events like today and tomorrow are so important, where we can share what works and importantly, what doesn't, and explore new ways to create safer, healthier, and more productive workplaces. This year, as Virginia said, marks the 30th anniversary of Comcare. In 1988, the Hawke government replaced the regime of common law court actions for workers' compensation with an integrated safety, rehabilitation and compensation system that encouraged return to and recovery at work. It's fascinating to see how the scheme has changed and evolved over that time. And there's a display on this in the Comcare trade stand, which I encourage you all to go and have a look at. The scheme covered more than half a million Commonwealth employees at the, at the time Compare was established. Today, it looks considerably different. The SRC Act covers around 400,000 employees and close to half of them work for national employers who are self-insured under the scheme. The licensees have diversified the scheme further beyond the myriad of occupations already found in the Commonwealth workforce, adding sectors such as construction, road transport and logistics. It's also interesting to look back at some of the data to see how much safer and healthier the workplaces covered by the Comcare scheme have become over the decades. In the first full year of the compensation scheme's operation, we received almost 20,000 new claims from injured and ill employees. Last financial year, the number of claims received from government sector of the scheme was just over 2,500. In recent years, we've put significant effort into transforming our business to improve health and safety outcomes. We've moved to a proactive risk-based model of regulation that makes greater use of data to deliver more targeted interventions. 
This involves smarter use of our data, including incident notifications and claims, to ensure we're across current trends and emerging issues to better understand the risks from a work health and safety and an injury perspective. An important part of this work is greater engagement with our jurisdiction. We're constantly increasing our interaction with agencies and companies that we regulate through proactive compliance and education activities to grow understanding of work health and safety obligations and achieve better practice. We've also put a lot of work into changing our claims management operation to be more outbound and proactive, focusing on early intervention and working more closely with employers to facilitate return to and recovery at work. This focus on prevention, early intervention and greater engagement with our clients is delivering excellent results for us. The number of new claims continues to fall significantly by around 30% over the last five years. And importantly, claims receiving incapacity payment show further improvement over the past year, reducing by 12% overall and recording reductions for longer term claims. That means we are getting people back to work quicker and healthier. There's also now greater financial certainty for the scheme. After we achieved full funding last year for the first time since 2010, following years of rising costs. In 2018, we have a high performing scheme with strong health and safety outcomes underpinned by solid financial health. And while we know our efforts in prevention and early intervention are getting results, we're always looking to drive further improvement. An example is the new model for claims management services, which we're preparing to implement. This will give government agencies three options to manage their claims under delegation, where it's cost effective for them to do so. There will be delegation of SRC Act powers to individual agencies, and they can choose between in-house claims management by their own staff, third party provider claims management, or continuing with Comcare as the claims manager. You'll hear a little bit about uh, that today in, in some of the concurrent sessions. And while it's early days and it's uncertain how many agencies will actually opt into these arrangements, this presents an excellent opportunity to test different approaches to claims management over the longer term. It's also important that we look beyond our scheme to drive positive change. As an organisation with a national reach, we are really well placed to do this. We're focusing more on efforts to improve work participation and productivity nationally. A goal for me as CEO is to help the community evolve in its understanding of the importance of good work to good health and wellbeing, and for work to play a greater role in recovery. Comcare is an active participant in the national conversation about the health benefits of good work, and we're continuing to support a program of work in this area. These efforts include improving GP certification to put more emphasis on pe what people can do rather than what they can't do as a way of sharpening the focus on return to work. We've established a unique public-private sector initiative to drive approaches to improving participation for Australians with health conditions that impact their ability to work. And you can also hear more about this in the concurrent session this afternoon with me. The collaborative partnership to improve work participation is the first real attempt in this country to work across multiple benefit and compensation systems to deliver positive change for large numbers of working Australians. We know that people with temporary or permanent health conditions that impacts their ability to work often struggle to find work, recover at work and stay in work. There are opportunities to increase their participation and improve health and productivity outcomes. And there are further opportunities to improve the various systems that are there to support them. We're working with Australian government departments, insurers, unions, and the medical profession to drive this change. Priority areas have been identified and work is well underway on a number of projects to improve participation. Broadly, these projects are looking at the data services, employer and employee attitudes, and developing consistent support for GPs. This year, the partnership released a significant piece of research. 
It's the first examination of all the major compensation and benefit systems to identify the flow of people through them and where they can be improved to deliver better health and productivity outcomes. This work is groundbreaking, giving us a basis for improving Australia's service delivery model right across the board for supporting people with injury or disability in their return to work. We also remain focused on improving mental health, an important and challenging national issue, and it's front and centre of the conference program again. We have expert pre presenters, including Margot Leiden from Superfriend, the Industry Superfund's Mental Health Initiative, Australian Federal, Federal Police Chief Medical Officer Katrina Saunders, and John Brady, who heads the Mates in Construction charity. Managing psychological injury effectively and making our workplaces more mentally healthy are challenges faced by us all. In the ComCare Premium Scheme, mental stress injuries account for around 15% of all claims, but make up about 40% of all costs and around 40% of all time lost. So it's clear we need to continue our focus on mental health in the workplace and find ways to improve it. Last year, I established the Strategic Research and Innovation Group within ComCare to focus on mental health, the collaborative partnership and the health benefits of good work and to develop our research program. The group's mental health program is focusing on a range of initiatives to reduce the incidence of psychological injury in the scheme, including three new early intervention programs that will be trialled over the coming year. We also engage agencies and licensees to share research and uncover, uh, encourage best practice through our increasingly popular community of practice events. ComCare also remains an active member of the Mentally Healthy Workplace Alliance, a partnership between business, government and community groups to drive positive workplace cultures and support mental wellbeing. A major project for the Alliance this year is developing a national framework to help Australian businesses and organisations become more mentally healthy. ComCare is thinking differently about workplace health and safety in a very changing environment, but we continue to drive improvements in the core systems that make workplaces as safe and productive as they can be. And that's of course reflected in our outcome, supporting participation and productivity through healthy and safe workplaces that minimise the impact of harm. Thank you all for participating in the conference, whether here in person or in our digital streaming. I hope the program over the next two days inspires you to make changes that will actually deliver positive results for individuals and workplaces. And I also would like to thank all of our sponsors. It's your recognition of the importance of the work that makes this conference possible. Thank you and please really enjoy the next few days. Thank you.